welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny, where I'd like to apologize in advance because I am super sick right now. I can't hear anything. So if I'm yelling more than usual, it's because I'm sick. I did have to say more than usual because I am aware that I do yell at you guys. I'm a scream talker, I, I, I don't know. So if you like when people get excited and they yell at you, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a yell sesh. <laughs> All right, you guys, so today's video is a video I do maybe two or three times a year, um, but I think I've gathered enough products to talk to you about these products. Okay, hold on, rewind. I think I have enough products to actually make a video. Now this video is a little controversial because it gets me removed off more PR lists than anything else I've done on this channel. <laughs> so it's very interesting to me how PR relationships work because a lot of brands handle their own PR directly. Other brands hire like a marketing agency to do it for them. Um, others have their whole umbrella company take care of all the little brands. So it's a whole world of PR that happens behind the scenes. But I do have to say that there are a couple of really big brands that after seeing my Mrs. videos, removed me off their PR. And I'm like, you know what? Here's a perfect example. Um, on my last Mrs. video, I don't remember, actually it wasn't a Mrs. It was a review video on the um, Sol de Janeiro, uh, Coco Cabana uh, body gel moisturizer hybrid, whatever. Um, they actually reformulated it. You know, they listened to our reviews. They reformulated it. It doesn't smell so much like movie theater popcorn anymore. But the beauty about um, being able to have freedom of speech or rather just sharing our opinion on products is that companies that actually want to better their brand listen to the feedback and take it constructively. Um, there are a lot of brands that get defensive and they think their products are perfect and they remove you from PR lists, which I find extremely aggravating. That does not stop me uh, from being a consumer. If I wanna try a product and I get removed off a PR list, I'm still gonna go out and buy it. And like I say in all my Mrs. videos, I like to bring up a product that was a miss for me, but I do present it in a tasteful way and in a way that might be useful to someone else. We have all different types of hair, skin type, body sensitivities, and so products aren't gonna work well for everyone. There are so many products that I wish would work for me, and they just don't. You know, I have really thin hair, most hair products don't work for me. My skin type, super normal. Um, I don't struggle with scarring, blemishes, or anything that I really like to cover up, so I'm really not gonna be able to provide really good feedback on like super duty full coverage products. You know what I mean? So take everything that we say as product reviewers or um, criticizers with a grain of salt. You know, if you are on the same boat as me where you notice that we have the same commonalities, the same things we like, then it might apply to you. Otherwise, hey, if you're still curious to try a product, take what I say as like entertainment. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into it. I do want to start with one product in particular, or rather brand as a whole. I gave it a shot, you guys. I really did. I gave it a shot. I made Parker try it too. And I'm sorry, Kendall Jenner, but your tooth care line is not good. Um, so in here, I think these are all the products that I want to show you. There was a toothbrush too, but I just tossed it. So the Kardashians, huge empire, right? Huge, successful, amazing, amazing entrepreneurs, business women. I mean, they work hard and you know they do, but all of these girls are putting their names or their faces on new brands. Moon is a tooth care, oral hygiene brand, I guess you could say an oral hygiene brand that actually has a really good business concept to it. So a little bit about the brand. Um, all of their products are globally and ethically sourced. They're all vegan, they're all cruelty free. It is a good brand. I mean, it it has a good like business backbone to it. I just didn't like the actual products. The toothbrush I felt was just gimmicky. It felt like one of those free toothbrushes you get from your dentist like those disposable ones. Um, the bristles are way too soft. It didn't feel like it was actually doing anything for my teeth. As far as the mouthwash is concerned, I got the fluoride-free, alcohol-free, activated charcoal whitening mouth rinse. Um, this is the one you use before you brush your teeth. It burns 
so badly, like inside your mouth. I'm like, man, if it's alcohol free, what's the burning agent that's in there? So I really didn't enjoy that. And it is really cool because it's kind of like a light gray. It, it is like a charcoal mouth rinse. Um, the toothpaste itself, um, the one that I used is the anti-cavity fresh mint with fluoride. I don't mind using fluoride products on my teeth. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like. For me, when it comes to um, toothpaste, I want the mintiness to actually linger. I want that clean, bright, fresh feeling in my mouth. Um, and this one's a little sweet and it doesn't leave that like sparkling, fresh, minty flavor to it. So I can't attest to the whitening capabilities. I can't attest to that. I just know I didn't like the products. The mouthwash burned. I didn't like the toothbrush. Um, and this one's just a little too sweet and it doesn't have that like cooling, refreshing, hey, I actually just clean my teeth feeling afterward. Um, she also has, I mean, it's a complete line of oral care. There's floss, there's whitening, there's um, after wine and coffee wipes for your teeth. It's a whole range and I love the packaging and the marketing is great, but for me, I don't know, I expect I don't know, I have like a certain standard when it comes to oral care. A lot of you guys ask me what I use and how I keep my teeth white. Honestly, I drink a ton of coffee, but I do tend to do certain things like brush my teeth right away afterward or use a straw when possible. I have like my little reusable collapsible straw in my purse. Um, I don't think I have high standards um, or high, um, high maintenance when it comes to oral care because I just use like Crest toothpaste. Um, but I, I don't know, I guess I just, I had my hopes up for a brand like this and it really just kind of fell short. Um, another product that I was really disappointed in and I really was looking forward to it because I've tried other products from this brand. Um, this is Love, Beauty, and Planet, the body wash. I hauled this um, when I did a sponsorship with Walmart a couple of months ago. I really tried to get through it, you guys. Do you see where it is? For me, body wash is a sore subject. A, because of Caress. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go a couple years back. <laughs> <laughs> Caress went and broke my heart. I have a pretty high standard for what I look for in a body wash because I have really dry skin and I have sensitive skin. I don't have reactive skin, so I don't break out in hives or I don't get rashy very often unless I'm stressed. Um, but as good as this smells, I couldn't figure out why my skin was getting rashy after a shower. My skin was like itchy and rashy. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. It wasn't horrible. Like it didn't. It didn't look like I, you know, touched poison ivy or anything. But my skin was just very reactive. It was very itchy, and I started to get these little tiny red bumps, like tiny little bump. Ugh, be grossed out. But it was just my skin was reacting to something I was using. The minute I stopped using this, they went away. So I was like, huh? There might be a fragrance in that specific body wash that my body doesn't like because there is another one in this line that's like a baby blue. I think it's coconut something um, that I used up and I did not um, have a reaction to it. So I don't, like I said, I don't consider myself to have sensitive skin, but if you do, I don't think I would even risk it at this point, you know? Two products um, that are kind of in the same family. Um, you guys know I am a nut when it comes to body butters or body creams. So the Janato, Pistache, those are two of my favorite brands. They're super rich, super luxe, super emollient. I love them, I go through them a ton. So I decided to try a product from Pacifica and I like to venture out with new products from Pacifica because I know right off the bat they're going to be cruelty free. They're going to have healthier ingredients. So overall, it's just like a cleaner brand that I feel more confident in um, using. Plus it's easy to find at Target and I go to Target like three times a week. Um, so when I saw coconut and souffle in the name, I was like, don't mind if I do Pacifica. I want you all over my body. Um, do you know that smell? I hate to use the word rancid because rancid automatically takes me to like a really dark place. Like it takes me to like rotting dumpster garbage and that's not what I, that's not the smell. Like when a lipstick has turned and it smells kind of plasticky, you know, it's turned so it's a rancid lipstick. It doesn't smell bad, but it smells a little more flat or plasticky, like I don't know. This lotion smells really good. It applies, it's very nice. It's a very lightweight body cream, so it does it, it's not gonna leave that super thick coat that I appreciate from Body Butters, that thick, heavy, 
very moisturizing coat. It doesn't. It gets absorbed. It smells really good, but after it set, settles or like sets into the skin, it does have like a smell to it. I don't know if the one I got was just old. It might have been, you know, exposed to like flash temperatures with shipping and things like that, um, like in the storage facilities. So a lot of times with products, they get mishandled. They, pu they get put in um, really cold storage or in a really hot truck and things like that, and it makes the products turn. So I don't know if that's the thing, but it didn't leave me curious to want to get a different one and try it out. So I was like, I'm already happy with pistache. I'm happy with Boom Boom. Like, but this was a drugstore brand, which is why I tried this one as well. This is the Heavenly Coconut Cream from Vitabath. This is a body cream that is very hydrating. Um, I guess I was expecting more from the scent of it. Um, I was thinking more, it was gonna be a formula more like the body creams from Bath and Body Works that are a lot thicker, or like Victoria's Secret, they're the same brand. Um, the scent on this one is very off-putting. It doesn't smell turned or rancid. It just doesn't smell good. When I see coconut, I want to smell like a tropical vacation or like a adult beverage with a little umbrella or flower sticking out of it. <laughs> and so I was expecting more of that, but the scent fell short. The lotion itself is nice. It feels good. It gets absorbed. You don't, you know, you're not... I wouldn't say, oh, this is definitely like a winter body butter. It's not extra emollient or like anything magnificent. But I could really, really live and die in this life and never smell this again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't tease me with coconut and cocktails and then smell weird, okay? All right, you guys, if you have ever doubted my integrity and you've ever doubted anything I've said and you've, you know, become a little skeptical or thought, hmm, maybe Danny isn't necessarily telling the truth. If you were to say on the count of three, a few brands that I am diehard loyal to and will always promote given the opportunity, what would you say? Just take a wild guess. What would you say? Briogeo, Sol de Janeiro, um, Urban Decay. There are a few brands that you see me use often and talk about a lot. In fact, I've had the opportunity to work with them in branded content, but I do have to talk about products when they do fall short for me or my expectations. Now, like I said, products don't work for everyone. However, they do work for specific people. So not all products, a, it's kind of like a chapstick, right? A chapstick is gonna make the vast majority of people feel good, right? It's comforting on the lips, it's moisturizing, so it's not that hard to find a chapstick that like, wow, is life-changing. But when it comes to things that are very specific, like hair, texture, shine, quality, breakage, um, manipulation, extensions, uh, having dyed it, whatever, or underarms, uh, your underarms, are extremely different from one person to the other based on diet, based on stress, based on um, lifestyle. So those are two things that really um, are really niche markets. So it's not gonna be a one size fits all. The first product that I wanna share with you guys is the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Honey Moisture Deep Conditioning Mask. And you could tell he's a little collapsed because we put him in our shower for a few weeks, really gave him a try, but my hair is so jealous of my life, and that only makes sense if you say it in Spanish. Jealous in Spanish, when you use it in like grammar context, it means it doesn't like to play nice with other things. Not jealous, like, oh my God, I'm so jealous of Danny. No, it's, um, it's the way, it's the context that it's used. So my hair doesn't really agree with a ton of products. My hair is very thin attacking me apparently my hair is very thin there's very little of it it grows really fast um since my ex plant i have a lot of new growth so you could see a lot of like shading in areas where my hair was really thin um i do take um biotin supplement from briogeo that makes my hair grow super fast you can see how long it is now based on how short it was like uh, almost under my ears a few months ago so um hair is one of those things that doesn't really it's not a one size fits all. Like you see a lot of YouTubers that are like, oh, I'm on seven day hair that I haven't washed it. Girl, I have to wash my hair every seven minutes, not every seven days. <laughs> so unfortunately for me, a product like this is something that would work great with people like my friend Veto. Um, she has 
beautiful, really thick, long, shiny, um, heavy hair. And so a product like this is necessary for people that have really, really thick hair shafts um, because they lose moisture a lot faster than like baby hair like this. And so a deep conditioning mask like this one that's a little bit heavier than the classic Don't Despair Repair Hair Mask um, is, is, is key for hair health. So if you were to have coarser hair, drier hair, or even longer hair, uh, where you would, you know, really condition from like shoulder down. This is a beautiful product for that. But for me, where my hair is this short and this thin and doesn't like to play, play nice with others, this product was a little bit heavy for that. It smells amazing though, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't just put some on the tips just to have that scent lingering <laughs> in my hair. The other product from Briogeo is the Be Well Tea Tree and Eucalyptus Clean Deodorant. I got a ton of comments on this. Like, Danny, have you tried it? Danny, Danny, what's your feedback? What's your feedback? You know you love to sacrifice your armpits for us. What's the scoop on the Briogeo deodorant? Unfortunately, this didn't work for me. Um, I had to reapply three times in the day. And again, I think that has a lot to do with me, with my lifestyle, with the way that my armpits smell. You guys, we've run the gamut. I've done the detox. I've done the masks for my armpits. I've done the don't eat processed foods. Like I've done all the things and I just think I smell seasoned. <laughs> And so finding a green deodorant that actually works, that doesn't require to be reapplied three to four times a day is extremely challenging. So this one, unfortunately, is not something that I have room in my life for because I can't reapply that many times in the day. Homegirl forgets, okay? Between all the mom, 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 and the dogs, um, it's easy to forget. And when you remember, it's because you smell. <laughs> It's a little too late. Um, another product in the same family is the Schmidt's Coconut Pineapple. So when I did my green deodorant uh, review, I reviewed 12 non-toxic deodorants for you guys. And I said Schmidt's is one of the few that does work. However, the baking soda gives me a rash and it, it just becomes very painful where I need to take a break from it and then go back to using it and then take a break and then go back to using it. So many of you were like, oh my God, Danny, try the sensitive skin formula. It's pineapple scented, tropical drink, um, and it's baking soda free. In fact, Schmitz even left a comment in that video and said, hey, email us and we'll send you product if you wanna try. I didn't email them, I was like, Target's a lot closer. So I bought it. I wish so bad that this actually worked for me because the smell is intoxicating. It's delicious. You lift up your armpits and you smell like a fresh juicy pineapple. However, four hours later, you smell like a pineapple that has turned. <laughs> so again, another product that works for a few hours and then I must reapply. If I need to reapply it twice, that's my limit. At the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, I can do that, but I can't do the midday, the after lunch, the after I you know, ran at Walmart a couple laps and picked up, you know, did the carpool lane at, the pick, at school for my kids, I can't. I don't have that. I don't have room in my purse to carry a deodorant. You know what I mean? <laughs> now we're gonna talk about a few mascaras. The first one isn't necessarily a miss for me, but I did wanna mention it, rather. The first one, isn't necessarily a miss. It's just a miss for me. Um, this is the Warrior Princess Mascara from Flower Beauty. For those of you, which the vast majority of mascara users like drier mascaras, I'm in the small um, demographic of people that like the wet mascaras. This one from Flower Beauty is a very, very dry mascara. Um, it's very reminiscent of like Better Than Sex mascara. So if you guys really like dramatic volume and you like to um, layer your mascaras, this is a really good option. For me, I need to start off with a wet base. So when it's going to make me have an added step in my routine, I automatically consider it a miss. Is this a product that's not gonna be in my makeup? No, because when I wanna layer mascaras, I know this is gonna be a great one to go to to add that density or the volume. But as a base, it's never gonna work. So it's not gonna be a mascara that I instinctually reach for first. It's gonna be someone that comes in second or third place when I'm doing the mascara cocktail. 
two that were just absolute misses are from Well People. Um, they're actually the same mascara, except one is the XL version, um, which is like the dramatic volume one. So let me see if I can pull the name on here. They are the Expressionist Volumizing, and then I think just the Expressionist. So these are the two mascaras. Well People is a green, non-toxic beauty brand. Um, I got these, where did I get these? I got one of these at Credo, um, that really great, non-toxic green beauty store. I, you guys, they get so much of my money. And then I actually got the second one as PR once, uh, once Well People, once Ulta started to carry Well People, which I thought was pretty exciting. So those are the two wands, and you can tell. I used this mascara for about a week, and I just couldn't love it. That's how dry it is. So I felt like I was doing all this work, and I wasn't getting any payoff. Like, it was just like I was just brushing my lashes, but nothing was was getting stuck. You know, usually with a volumizing mascara, you go in and it eventually builds up. These were like, I was just stroking my lashes, but nothing was actually being deposited or left behind. So I was like, anybody got time for that? First of all, non-toxic green beauty brands are very expensive. Like you're paying for a healthier product, but I, I mean, I want at least some confetti or bells and whistles, like at least put some glitter on my lashes. <laughs> a really big miss for me and I can't imagine this would be a um, very big win for anyone. Um, maybe someone that's just dabbing or dipping their toes into makeup is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. Um, this is one of the newest concealers from ColourPop. How exciting is it that they have such a wide range of cosmetic products now? I, I love that. And I also love this type of doe foot applicator for concealers. It's the flat paddle. Um, so you have concealer, you have enough concealer on one dip for both eyes. The problem for me with this was it's just too thin. I want coverage for my concealer, but I want coverage without the, uh, without the sacrifice of it creasing. So it's very hard for me now that I have drier skin on my under eyes. You guys, I'm 35, I don't have baby skin anymore. You know, I have the crow's feet, and if I do too much powder, it's gonna crease, it's gonna give me crepey skin. Um, so finding a full coverage concealer that will hide my panda eyes, but also won't crease is a challenge. So I'm not saying this is a bad product, I'm just saying, for me, my age, and the heavy duty coverage that I expect from a concealer, this one flat falls very short. It is a skincare heavy concealer with the hyaluronic acid. However, give me more pigment and take away the skincare. I'll worry about my skincare. You know what I mean? So I haven't tried the other concealer from ColourPop, which a lot of you guys have told me is really good. But this one I think would be good for someone that, um, likes drugstore affordable makeup, maybe like a 16, 17 year old that's like dipping their toes into makeup and doesn't need that much coverage. It's a great product. It's affordable, it's available at Ulta, um, and it's it has skincare. So it might be a great way to try a hybrid product and just kind of start dipping your toes into makeup use, you know? Moving on to an embarrassing product. <laughs> so let's talk about girl stuff here. Um, NADS Facial Wax Strips. We talked about this in a recent video where I said, are you hashtag team mustache? Because I am. Um, mustache and bikini zone. So we're gonna get a little TMI here, but this is just what we do because we're a family. When I go on vacation, Parker and I tend to go out of town, like Mexico out of town, maybe once or twice a year. And those are the two times where I wax my mustache and where I wax like my bikini zone. Not the whole thing, just the bikini zone. And I know that's TMI, you don't need to know that, but I like to look my age. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like to look like I haven't hit puberty. You know what I'm saying? So I keep things groomed but there's a couple of heavy duty steps that I take when I know I'm gonna be away from a very trusted razor or I'm gonna have a lot of sun exposure. So I cheated on Sally Hansen and when you cheat, you reap the consequences, okay? There are severe consequences when you cheat. I know Sally Hansen wax strips are my way to go. I know they never let me down. However, these were cheaper at Target so I grabbed them and I regretted it. 
it was basically like I put myself through torture and it didn't take away any of the hair, okay? It took away flesh, but it didn't rip out any of the hair. Sally Hansen has never done me dirty. They have never ripped off my skin and they always take the hair with them, okay? This one is not okay. I am not okay after using this. I used it and I tried my best, you guys, but I was like, I have skin burns now and I'm gonna have to pretend that it's not, that it's totally okay. Like, Parker, please let me try and convince you that that burn down there is from using this new product from Target. It's a little embarrassing, you guys, okay? That's why I said it was TMI. Moving on, two more products and we're done. The first one is from Holy Frog. This is the Shasta AHA Refining Acid Wash. This is <clears throat> a new brand a new product and the whole concept of holy frog or this brand it's super cute look at that little frog the whole concept is you don't need the same cleanser every day one day you're you're feeling oily greasy and pimply and you use your acid wash another day your skin is feeling dry and um dehydrated so you use the moisturizing wash the other day is a total normal day so you use the daily face wash so the whole concept is pick your cleanser based on the type of day you're having to me as a consumer I'm conflicted because it sounds like a great idea in fact I tried it and I used up I think it's in here called the that's my empties bin, which I'm gonna film after this video. I tried the Superior Omega nu nu Nutritive Gel Wash. This is the everyday cleanser in the baby blue. I loved it. I went through it. In fact, I was trying to do this. Like, I almost cut off the top because I wanted to get the last little drop out. I love this one. I have the pink one in my shower right now, which is, which is garbage. I should have put it in here, but I'll save it for my next misses. Um, but I use this one, which for me, whenever it's a brightening product, an AHA product, a um, acid product, I love them. I love anything that's going to bring brightness and retexturizing or untexturizing or retexturizing. You know what I'm trying to say. Anything that is going to give me a fresh base is something that I really enjoy. This one, for some reason, just, it didn't, it missed the mark completely. It didn't feel like it was doing anything. It smells awful. Um, and I just didn't get any results from it. So I was like, okay, this concept of pick your cleanser based on the type of skin day you're having is brilliant, but that only works if all the cleansers are great. And two of the three for me didn't work. So could it be a concept that we carry on uh, based on brand or could it be a concept that we do our own custom cleanser routine where one day I would use um, I don't know one from Ulla Henriksen and then another day I use another one from I don't know uh, Indy Lee which is a cleanser I really really like um, so could you build your own cleanser routine um, or does it have to be based on the brand because if it is based on the brand then I don't like the concept you know what I'm saying Okay, and the final product is a product from It Cosmetics, and this is the Hello Cheekbones um, palette. <clears throat> In theory, this palette sounds great. Um, it looks beautiful. It kind of reminds you of old school Mary Kay. Um, and I try to use it. I think you guys saw it in a Get Ready With Me video. I love the size of this palette. Come at me with a giant palette that has a giant bronzer and a giant highlighter, and I'm a fan. Hello, Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow is my everyday, daily, like contour bronzing palette ever. So I love the concept of having a giant highlighter and a giant bronzer. However, the products in here are not good. Um, I can't imagine this working for anybody. In fact, the highlighter in here is too pink, but not only that, I don't mind a highlighter that's pink. It doesn't transfer. So I swatched it on my middle finger and you could see it's a non-metallic, non-glittery highlighter, but it doesn't transfer. I just applied that big giant swatch to the back of my hand. It doesn't transfer. It doesn't stick to the skin. So you just take it, but then nothing happens. Like where did it go? It just disappears. 
And then the bronzer in here is extremely, extremely terracotta. Like this is the shade of like clay. Like put this in pottery and it looks great. Don't put it in my bronzer. Now, albeit it is a matte bronzer and highlighter contouring duo. If it just said on here that it was a bronzer, okay. But it says it's a contouring duo. So it's for the purpose of contouring with a bronzer. If you're gonna contour with a bronzer, the bronzer can't be that orange. And even here in the picture, it's telling you where you're expected to use it. It, it really wouldn't work. I couldn't put that highlighter in these many places because you wouldn't see it, one. And two, it's too pink. Most people are trying to remove the pink from their skin. That is way too much pink happening and way too much orange. So all in all, this product to me was an 100% fail. And I sat here thinking, well, how can I pitch this to someone else? Like, if it doesn't work for me, how can it work for someone else? Like this conditioner, for example. This one would be great for, like I said, my friend Veto. Um, really thick, luscious, long, 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 beautiful, shiny hair. You need a deep conditioning mask, that's your jam. But like this, how do I pitch this to anybody? Hey, so if you like having pink tones and orange powder on your face, you know what I mean? It just... <laughs> I can't spin it, you guys. I cannot spin it. I would love to know in the comment section below if you have tried, recently tried, a really popular makeup product that everyone keeps talking about and was a miss for you. For example, someone left me a comment and said, I just can't. I tried the Briogeo shampoo and conditioner that you love so much and it didn't work for me. And I was like, I could hear my heart breaking on the inside of my chest cavity. But that's what happens. That's what happens with products. So <clears throat> let me know a popular product that you were super disappointed that didn't work out for you, but has worked for a ton of other people. Let us know in the comment section below. And like I said, these products may have not worked for me, but they may work for you. So because I am mentioning them, I will list the link them in the description box below, just so that you're like, well, what deodorant was she talking about that smelled like a delicious, refreshing, cooling cocktail in her armpit? Well, I was talking about this one, you guys. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed what you saw, if you love the conversation, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification so you don't miss a post. Um, um, and I think that's it. I love you guys so much and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye!